What's up guys, it's Dull Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to Warhammer 40k Space Marine Power Armor Explained. So this is from Generation Films. I think this is my first time reacting to him. I don't think I've reacted to him before. I've had a couple requests though, so we have this video, and then I think one or two more that are also on the list. Um, so we'll end up getting to those eventually. But this is the first one I wanted to react to. I think there was another one that was explaining the marks 1 through 10, uh, which we actually just did a similar video uh, kind of explaining a similar topic from Ar uh, Arbiter Ian, I believe his name was the last video that I uploaded. Um, so a lot of these in the, that we're going to be doing uh, tonight, at least, are all kind of in the same vein and the same genre of, you know, power armor. Uh, and they've been really interesting so far. So anyway, link to the original video down below. And again, this is Warhammer 40k Space Marine, or Space Marine Power Armor Explained from Generation Film. So let's jump into it. Welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. I know what you're thinking. American Benjamin, where is my Expanse content? Listen, more Expanse content is on the way. I am currently working on a proto-molecule project. However, somewhere along the way, there was a bit of an outbreak. And so I've never reacted to Generation Films before. Is they have multiple people. Is that why he's referring to himself as American Ben? And uh, long story short, um, all of my neighbors are dead. Somewhere. But at least now it's quiet for my shoot. Anyway, today we have to take a slight deviation away from the Expanse, because I haven't done a 40k video in a while, and in the past few videos I've been starting to see the ire of 40k fans arise in the comments. And I'll be honest, 40k fans scare the crap out of me. They will hunt you down and end you in the name of the Emperor if you fail to honor his holiness. <laughs> the only difference between 40k fans and ISIS is that one of these groups is willing to kill innocent women and children to get what they want, and the other is ISIS. So to avoid the watchful eye of the Inquisition, as we covered Martian Marine Power Armor the other day, today we are going to discuss Warhammer Space Marine Power Armor, something we have never done on this channel. I was originally going to start by explaining all of the different models of Space Marine Power Armor, but because a lot of the viewers of this channel don't know a lot about 40k, HERESY DIE! I figured that first I should do a general <laughs> guide on Space Marine <laughs> That's funny, I think I've had the heresy comment on I'm going to say probably anywhere from like 30 to like 60% of the videos I've posted about Warhammer, at least there'll be at least one comment that says this is heresy or they'll, they'll be or they'll like quote what I say in the video and then say heresy. <laughs> power armor and then my next video I will explain its evolution over time from model to model. Now, for those who are unaware and therefore likely to be punished for their heresy, the Space Marines or Adeptus Astartes are humanity's most revered warriors. And yet, whether they are actually human or not is sometimes called into question, given their genetic augmentation and brutal training regimen. Space Marines are superior to average humans in almost every way except personal hygiene. Man, why are the legs turned? I don't, are the legs turned like that in the original Vitruvian Man? They are. I, I never noticed that. Why? Yeah, I never noticed the legs were turned like that before. Space Marines are so strong and resilient that even a grave wound suffered in battle by the ordinary guardsmen would be but a scratch to a Space Marine. And yet still, given the filthy Xeno hordes and hellish ghouls of the chaos realm the Space Marine often finds himself in the way of, he still needs to wear power armor in order to survive for a considerable amount of time out in the void. Not that surviving really matters. Dying a glorious death in the name of the Emperor is a divine gift that far outweighs even the offer of eternal life. Generally, any given suit of Space Marine power armor is fully enclosed and composed of shaped adamantium and plasteel plates that are encased in a ceramite ablative layer. Plasteel is an advanced synthetic material with the consistency of plastic, but the tensile strength of steel alloy that was developed during the Dark Age of Technology, an era of mankind's scientific and technological ascendancy in the Milky Way galaxy that lasted from the 15th millennium to the 25th millennium AD. Ceramite is then a common heat and shock resistant material used throughout the Imperium of Man. And adamantium, well, see Wolverine. It's one of the strongest substances known to man. Space Marine armor is heavy and would be a burden on the space. Okay, is adamantium real? Because that is adamantium. Because I see it referenced in so many fucking different things. Official metal alloy. Uh, okay, yeah, why is it in so many different things? It's fictional. History. Um... 
Yeah. Inter well, I wonder, like, I'm surprised nobody's gotten, like, sued for copyright infringement. Because it seems like you see Adamantium, it's in, like, I think it's in Skyrim. It's in Warhammer. It's in Marvel Comics. You would think that, like, with, you know, this fictional metal, with everyone re referencing it, it would be, you know, I think it's in World of Warcraft. I, well, I guess that's Adamantine. But still, like, with it being so many different things, you'd think it would be, um, you know, there'd be, like, some copyright infringement or something there, considering it's fictional. Marines movement, but electrically motivated fiber bundles in the suit replicate the movements of the user, thus enhancing his strength. Actually, Space Marine power armor should really be thought of as less of a suit and more of a second skin. See, Space Marine neophytes are implanted with what are called gene seed organs. Gene seeds are germ cells in viral machines that are genetically engineered to develop into special organs that endow Space Marines with superior biological powers. The last of these organs to be inserted into a Space Marine neophyte is known as the black carapace, which is a neuroreactive fibrous material that is implanted into the Marine's torso just beneath the skin. Once implanted, an apothecary then uses surgical tools to cut plug-in points through the carapace that mesh with the Space Marine's power armor and allow Space Marines to use the carapace's neural sensors to directly interface their central nervous system with their power armor's cybernetic systems. Too long didn't listen, basically a Space Marine can operate his power armor as if it were a part of his own body. We often say stylistically of Marines of different sci-fi franchises that they are their armor. But in the case of 40K Space Marines, we mean it quite literally. As users are fully sealed into their armor, they are completely secured from the environment around them and can thus survive in noxious atmospheres and even persist after exposure to biological and chemical weapons. That said, Space Marines love to have their helmets off. I think this is probably because there's something about the smell of toxic gas that excites them, but also because <laughs> such is a way of refusing to show fear in the face of one's enemy. The main power source of a Space Marine's armor is a subatomic microfusion generator that sits in the armor's backpack. The armor also contains a backup solar power converter and 100 solar cell batteries that can store absorbed solar energy. Yes, when space marines aren't battling orcs and chaos demons, they turn their LAS cannons towards global warming. The solar power converter, of course, allows the space marine to operate without his backpack for an extended period of time. The backpack also houses an environmental support system and is capable of a host of life support functions, which include an auto medici that can inject the suit's wearer with various painkillers, combat stimulants, and anti-venoms. The suits can also monitor the Marine's biological functions and transmit such information back to the user. And in the case of serious injury, the info can be sent to apothecaries to alert them of the need for assistance. The suit's temperature regulator works to automatically maintain the wearer's temperature. Heat is created by the power core and then when needed can be vented via the backpack's nozzles. The temperature... So that, that's interesting that they have solar power and stuff. Because uh, I mean, I guess technically solar power was around in the 80s, but it's just... It's generally when you think of solar power, you think of like more recent stuff. But I guess back then it was not so politicized. I guess is probably the best way to put it. Because now it's like a very, you know, when you, when you like, it's kind of funny. Because now when you hear of of anything solar powered, you just instantly my mind goes to like political stuff. It's like people arguing about climate change and shit like that, and then arguing about like, oh, it's actually worse for the environment because of the the mines that we need and you know the slave labor to get those minerals out of the ground and all this shit. But I guess, you know, I mean, one, that's not an issue for fucking, <laughs> uh, you know, the Imperium. Slave labor is just part of the norm. But two, I guess it wasn't as politicized back in the 80s as it is now. Seems like that's like a more recent thing. Litter works with the suit's environmental system and its airtight seal to allow the Space Marine to fight in any setting, whether in a vacuum, in the warp, or inside of a volcano, without so much as feeling a slight change in the weather. As for dying of starvation while in the suit, the power armor contains a nutrient reservoir which acts as a self-replenishing high food and drug filler energy liquid food store that works to constantly sustain a space marine's metabolism. Space marines don't need to eat or drink while in their armor. Good food is not a pleasure afforded to the space marine, but they simply don't have the time for a hearty meal anyway. In 40k, eating is a sign of weakness. Real men have their food injected into them. <laughs> Finally, the suit's backpack also contains movement stabilizer thrusters for use in low or zero G conditions. As for the individual- Honestly, you know, it would be so convenient if you could just eat a pill that had like your daily calories. It would just like slowly over the course of the day, 
just release all those into your system. Perfect amount of nutrients for your body type or whatever. That'd be so convenient. But also, like, a lot of food tastes really fucking good. Like, I would still want to eat, like, cheesecake and fucking burgers and spaghetti and fucking... There's so much good food that, like, I wouldn't want to miss out on the taste of. But it, 100%, like, from a military perspective, that'd be so convenient components of a Space Marine's armor, first and foremost, there's the helmet. The helmet's main function is to, and you'll never guess this, protect the wearer's head. Though Space Marines consider getting shot in the head while helmetless to be a good pick-me-up, like a cup of coffee might be to a regular human. The helmet also contains most of the suit's auto senses or combat systems. These include comm systems, audio filters, targeting reticules, range finders, tactical displays, and auspex links. An auspex, which is also known as a multi-scanner or surveyor, is a short-range sensor device that can detect motion, gases, and energy emissions across a wide band of the electromagnetic spectrum. Auspecs are used in tactical operations for triangulating the location of hidden enemy forces. Helmets also contain photo lenses, which are reinforced eye guards that protect Space Marines from blinding bursts of light, and also offer the user infrared and ultraviolet vision, as well as the ability to see in low light conditions. Finally, the helmet usually contains a Vox grill, which is used to amplify a Space Marine's battle cry to ear-shattering volumes. The Vox grill also contains a respirator that works to filter out toxins from the air outside the suit, though it can be shut off in favor of an internal air supply system housed inside of the suit. By the way, almost all of the tech in the helmet is thought activated, as in the Space Marine operates his helmet using his mind. Below the helmet, we have the gorget, which protects the throat. The suit's pauldrons then protect the shoulder area. The pauldrons are auto-reactive and are shaped to deflect and absorb enemy fire. Space Marines are actually specifically trained to use the angles of their pauldrons to deflect incoming shots. Also, the pauldron commonly contains a Space Marine's ID markings, such as chapter symbols, company and squad markings, and honor badges. Below the pauldrons is the plastron, the suit's chest plate, which often contains the armor's thickest layer of ceramite, and which, beyond protecting the chest of the wearer, also shields the armor's power cables from damage. Disabling a Space Marine suit could mean death, so an argument can be made that protecting the power cables is as important as protecting the user's organs. The plastron is where you might find the Imperial Aquila. Yeah, I almost, I mean, I guess technically they're like super augmented, so they might be able to carry it regardless, but uh, from the other video we were watching, he was saying that, you know, they, because of the way it interf interf uh, interacts with like your, your neurons and shit, and your, uh, oh, what's the name of that system? Your, not your circulatory system, your, um, I'm trying to think of the name. It's the, uh, oh, I'm going to brain fart here. But anyway, the way it interferes, it, it interacts with your body makes it so that it actually makes you stronger, physically stronger, and able to carry a lot more weight. So, like, if you took out their cords, you could arguably... Uh, you know, just disable them and they'd just be stuck in the suit, just like sitting there. Like, yeah, can't do anything. I mean, I'm technically, I guess I'm safe here. It's just a giant metal suit, but I'm just gonna fucking sit here for a thousand years or whatever until somebody fucking finds me. A two headed eagle symbol representing the Imperium of Man or the Imperialis, a symbol of the Imperium of Man's victories over its enemies and an honor awarded to Space Marines following triumph in battle. As for the Space Marines' arms, gauntlets cover the hands and wrists, van braces protect the forearms, and cooters protect the elbows. Lower down, quisses protect the thighs, pole lanes protect the knees, and greaves guard the lower legs. The greaves contain gyroscopic stabilizers and power units that magnetize the soles of the armor's boots, effectively turning them into maglocks, which can be used on metal surfaces in low or zero-g conditions, along with the suit's thrusters to provide stability. As you might have been able to infer, these greaves are invaluable to Space Marines during boarding operations. Of course, as stated above, the suit has sabatons, or armored boots that protect the feet. Many of the components here may seem rather obvious, but the important thing to note is that the suit is not just one big piece. Even with the suit's link to its wearer's black carapace that make it like a second skin, it still is broken up into different parts, and ultimately the separation of these parts work in tandem with its inbuilt tech to aid the wearer's ability to move freely and efficiently. Finally, I just want to quickly point out that Space Marine armor does need to be maintained. Space Marine chapters employ servants known as artificers who spend their entire lives working for their chapter, making sure that the power armor of the chapter's marines is always up to snuff. It's not the highest paying gig, but you have to understand in the Imperium of Man, this is a pretty good gig, as most people's job is dying. 
<laughs> now, I know a lot of you listening to this video are going to be eager to point out things I've missed, and please do. Space Marine Armor has a lot of features, but I will be going into more of the individual aspects of different suits in my next video, so just keep that in mind. Overall, what separates 40k Space Marine Armor from other powered armor is the connection the Space Marine has to his suit. It's not just an emotional connection, it's a physical and biological connection that allows Space Marines to operate their suits as they would a body part. And this makes a Space Marine in his armor a terrifying foe. Anyway, that is the video. Please be on the lookout for my next video detailing all of the different iterations of Space Marine power armor over the years. Um, if you liked the video, please do give it a like, comment down below, uh, say anything you want. Comment on the Expanse if you want. But all right, yeah, so that, that's, that was a pretty good summary. Um, a lot of the stuff that he covered there was covered in the other videos. The only thing that I think that I really learned from that one that hadn't been covered in a lot of the other videos was uh, the, top, the stuff about the cables being at the front on a lot of the Space Marine armor. Although I guess in, in the previous video, uh, the Arbiter video, he said that like over the, different, over the course of the different iterations, maybe he'll get into this in his next video, over the course of the different iterations, they actually moved where a lot of the wiring was. Um, and that was kind of one of the constant balancing struggles they had when creating the armor, was trying to find the best place to hide it. Um, and then the other thing I didn't realize was that those those packs on the back are solar powered. I'd actually asked that in the Arbiter video, asked like what kind of engine they have. Um, and yeah, the, the, the solar panel thing's kind of neat and it actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, now my one question would be like, how do they function in the warp? Does the, are, are there suns in the warp? Um, Cause I've seen pictures of the warp, but it just seems to be like this like glue, like this glowing, almost like nebula looking thing. Um, so I'm not sure if there's suns and planets and stuff within the warp or if the warp is just kind of the space. Uh, I don't think I've reacted to any like actual lore videos specifically on the warp. Maybe there are some good ones out there. If there are, let me know down below. And yeah, we're gonna be reacting to this guy's uh, next video, probably sometime within the next week or so. Uh, again, I, I think I'm up to 96 videos. At, every time I'll, I'll like take out a chunk of like 10 videos in a day, and then I get 11 the next day, and then like I'll, I'll you know I'll be busy that day, so I'll only do five, but then I'll get like another 10 more. So uh, tonight, hopefully, we'll be able to pump out quite a few of these. But anyway, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.